I'm going to make a list of how you can turn diabetes around. So number one, stop the hybridized wheat. So what do we eat? Let's go down to about five. What you eat is a high vegetable diet. Remember this, vegetables are high in fiber, high in minerals, low in sugars. Fruit is high in fiber, high in sugar, low in minerals. So when you're looking at turning this around initially, very little of the fruit. And if you have fruit, it's low GI fruit. And it's not hard to get a, a glycemic index chart. Generous amounts of protein. You will find on the glycemic index that lentils, garbanzos, lima beans, black-eyed beans, cannelloni beans, kidney beans, so many legumes. We should eat them every day. They are, they are very nice level on the glycemic index. So what's your protein? Protein is your legumes. One man said to me he went to a health retreat in America 10 years ago as a diabetic and he said, I was told that I had to eat legumes, lots of them. He said, I did. It's 10 years later now and he's on no medication and managing well. Nuts and seeds. These three are high... I meant to say high fibre there. High fibre, which is high vegetables, generous proteins and your healthy fats. So what are your good fats? Nuts, seeds, avocado, coconut oil. Coconut in all its forms and olive oil and very low carbs. So the carbohydrates that are low GI are um, millet, oats, and quinoa. And for your bread, you can go spelt. And spelt and kamut are uh, wild hybrids of the original wheat. So it's basically what wheat used to be like. So they're the foods. It is that diet that will help to balance the, uh, the blood glucose levels in the body. If you, want to, if you want to read on this a little bit more, Dr. William Davis's book, Wheat Belly, he goes into detail on the uh, on the amylopectin, the different starches. Yeah. Is the sourdough bread still good? Yeah, always sourdough. What sourdough does is it breaks down the protein or the gluten in the grain and makes it more digestible. It actually also increases the the protein content of it, and because it breaks down the gluten structure, it actually lowers the carbohydrate content. And that's, of course, what, what you're looking for. You've heard of the paleo diet, the FODMAT diet. You've heard of Atkins diet. Basically, it, it's that sort of a diet. But it's a vegetarian diet. And let me show you how you can do the paleo diet vegetarian because there's no doubt about it. The Atkins diet and the paleo diet conquer diabetes and conquer it very quickly. So... We're going to have a look at the food. We're going to have a look at the protein content and the carbohydrate content because as you can see from this list, this high carb is actually a big contributing factor to diabetes. And we're going to go to Genesis 129 where God tells Adam and Eve what to eat. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth. What's a herb bearing seed? A grain is a herb bearing seed. And a legume is a herb-bearing seed. 
and a seed is a herb bearing seed. So what about grain? Well, we've got wheat, rye, barley, oats, amaranth, buckwheat, quinoa. Grains are high in protein, but they are quite high in carbohydrate. How many on our carbohydrate list are from grain? Cereal, bread, cakes, pretzels, pizza, pasta, right. So it's a high, a high carb diet is usually from the grain department. What about legumes? What's a legume? Chickpeas, lima beans, we well, call it garbanzos, black eyed beans, lentils, soy. Soy is only a problem if it's been genetically modified. High in protein and medium to low in carbohydrates. Now you'll find in the FODMAT diet, have you heard of the FODMAT diet? I've met people who've had huge change in the FODMAT diet, but the FODMAT diet dams legumes. It says that they cannot be digested in the human gut. That's because the human gut that can't digest them isn't working well. So all we need to do is listen to the lecture I gave yesterday on how to restore proper gut function and then the legumes can be handled. Most people suffer some wind or flatulence with legumes because they don't rinse them enough. Ideally you soak them and then you cook them in a pot after you've rinsed them and in another pot you have a nice rich sauce cooking and when the legumes are three quarters cooked, rinse them, rinse them. You see the colour of the water. What's the colour of the water? Grey. <laughs> There's your wind. Got that? You rinse that away and then you put your legumes into your lovely rich sauce and let that cook for about another half hour. That's the way to eat legumes and you won't have a problem. If you still have a problem, you probably need to listen to the lecture last night and learn how to boost your hydrochloric acid, your digestion. Seeds, what's a seed? In a seed, we've got chia seed, flax seed, uh, or flax seed or linseed, same seed, sunflower, pumpkin seed, Seeds are high in protein and they are quite low in carbohydrate. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree. In the which of the trees a fruit bearing seed? Fruit bearing seed is a nut. So, nuts we've got almond, Brazil, hazelnut, cashew, uh, walnut, pecan nut, so many nuts, macadamias. Nuts are high in protein, low in carbohydrate. And that's why this is the diet that works. Because in this diet here, you're consuming more legumes, seeds and nuts and less grain. You see, your legumes are about a third the carbohydrate content that you will find in your grain. Changing the diet makes a massive difference. A lot of people eat the carbohydrates to fill themselves up, but the fact is it doesn't. It gives a quick high and then a corresponding low, yes? The only time you lose weight is if you're not eating enough protein. And Dr. Atkins showed this very, very clearly. He said, if you're eating adequate protein, you will never lose muscle. So what I do is I eat legumes every meal and I eat nuts and seeds every meal and I don't lose the muscle and I don't lose the weight, I just stay the same. So that's often the missing link, is the protein. And when people go vegetarian, they often become protein deficient. One lady said to me, you're right. She said, a year ago my family and I decided to become vegetarian, become healthy. She said, we've all lost so much weight, we've got no energy. I said, what are you eating? Ah, oh, pasta, bread, cereal, <laughs> rice. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's often the missing link. And yeah, is the protein. 